Hi, welcome back, Wade and Zella. Uh, one of the most important chores that I have to do uh, uh, this time of year is start collecting my firewood for the winter. This trailer load, I need about 15 trailer loads like that. It should give me around eight to nine cord of wood, and that should last me the winter. split you know, probably 400 cord of wood maybe oh no that's too much 10 a cord yeah 150 cord of wood in the last few years it's not the strongest thing but uh, I also do a lot of uh, splitting by hand as well uh, it's one of the best exercises you can get in my opinion but because I have to do so much I'll use this thing to give my arms and that a break because uh, there's a lot of wood to split and I usually split or I try to split about a quart of wood a day to get it put away. I don't want to spend my entire fall doing firewood. A piece of wood that's got some hands in it. There we go. We're all right. Just knock the cord out by throwing the wood inside. Now, gathering wood for me is not a new thing. I, I've done that my entire life. Uh, I grew up, uh, the only source of heat we had in our family home was uh, uh, firewood. So yeah, back then I used to use uh, a horse to pull the wood out with my father. Old Queenie, she was uh, a, a Newfoundland pony. Smart horse. A stubborn horse. If you know anything about Newfoundland ponies, is, is they're, uh, they love to work. Uh, the one that we had had, she was more stocky than a lot of the Newfoundland ponies. Some Newfoundland ponies are kind of lean and they look like small ponies. But the girl that we had, just about every female horse that I've ever owned in my life, except for the ones I own now, were named Queen. She was a very smart horse. Uh, when I say she was stubborn, if she decided she had enough for the day, you couldn't get her to do any more. She would just stop, go home. <laughs> She did it for years and years and years, and she was so good at it that uh, we would be in the woods cutting wood, and uh, she'd walk up on her own, stop the sleigh right to where the stack of wood is. We'd load on all the long lengths. We didn't cut it up in blocks in the woods. We just cut it up in like six foot lengths. Threw them on the sleigh, the bunk sleds, and uh, she would just go home. Nobody even had to go with her. She'd just go and she'd stop at the wood pile. Obviously, someone had to be there to offload it, but you didn't have to be. She would just stand there and wait for you to come and offload it. But And then she would turn around on her own and come right back to the wood pile, do it all over again. She'd probably do that about six or seven times in a day. And after that, she's like, no, nope, I had enough. I'm finished. She'll go home, stop by the wood pile, unload it, and she would not come back in the woods. <laughs> and there was nothing you could do to make her. I mean, she was like, nope, I'm not moving. So you just unharness her, let her go, she go back out to her paddock and she's fine. Next day she do the exact same thing again. She was a strong pony. She'd take, I say, maybe one, one quarter of a quart of wood out in one load. We never really loaded her up to make her work too hard because we knew if we did that, <laughs> she'd do less. So, yeah, that's something I had to do all my life growing up. Uh, when I moved away and started my own company in Ontario, I had a wood stove in my house, but my main source of heat up there was uh, natural gas. So they didn't do much for wood up there. I would probably burn a quart of wood a year, but mostly it was just in the fireplace when we were sitting down, maybe having a, a glass of wine or a beer or something. 
that's back when I drank. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, like the one thing that you have to learn if you want to be a homesteader and try to be most uh, the most self-sufficient as possible is is that uh, wood is going to be your most reliable source of heat. So yeah, it's good to have a, a good airtight stove. Uh, I use a, a it's called a wood chief. Uh, I like that stove. I've had, I'd say about five in my lifetime. My parents used them. Uh, my grandfather used it. Uh, I burnt out two since I started my homestead. And this year I think we're going to actually go out and find another one. Find a, 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 buy another new one this year. It's just a, once I light my fire, it's usually around the end of September is when I'll actually start lighting the fire in my house. And it'll stay in right till the beginning of June next year. It doesn't go out. It never goes out. It, it runs 24-7. Uh, the reason I like the wood chiefs is because is when I go to bed at night, I can throw some bigger junks of wood in there, get up in the morning, and there's still lots of coals in the stove. You just throw a few more junks in, and off you go. And the house never cools down at night. You get up in the morning, and it's still 22, 23, 24. The problem when you have a wood stove, it's not like having a, a wood furnace or, you know, you go in and flip a switch and uh, uh, the heat is blowing out and you get to the temperature that you want and it shuts off. The disadvantages of a wood stove is is that uh, you try to control it the best you can uh, by uh, opening the stove up, closing the stove off, adding wood, and not adding wood. Uh, because it can get pretty hot. Like my house in the winter time, on average, is between 25 and 26 degrees Celsius. That's pretty warm. A lot warmer than I like it, but the problem is is you can't shut there let the stove go out when it's minus 20 outside. So you have to deal with the heat sometimes in the middle of winter. It's minus 20 outside, and we're opening up a window to let some hair blow through because the house is too hot. So yeah, but now I only have a small house. My house isn't that big. It's only like 1,400 square feet. So, And that's good for my wife and I. It's just the two of us anymore. Kids are all grown up, got their own homes, their own families. So yeah, I actually kind of enjoy this because it's uh, for one thing is it keeps you in shape. Uh, you move, a, you use a lot more muscles doing wood than you do when you're working in a gym. I can tell you that. <coughs> so yeah, I have I probably got a half a cord on there. I put a half a cord in the woodshed this morning, and I'm going to keep splitting this. Now sometimes. Like, these are some of the things that I see when people are, like, doing videos on wood and splitting wood and doing all this stuff, is, is that, not all of them, most of them do this, is, is they pick out the wood that you can split the easiest to show people how easy it is to split wood. Well, that's not true. 90% of the wood, I'd, well, maybe not 90, I'd say about 85% of the wood it's not easy to split. Sometimes you have to use a chainsaw to split it or split it halfway with a chainsaw or cut it halfway with a chainsaw and then use a, a splitting axe to split it the rest of the way. That's normal. That is a normal way when you have some big woods and woods, wood, chunks of wood I should say, that look like this. <laughs> this I have to split with a chainsaw. Because there's no way you're splitting that by hand, or with a, a small splitter. Now some of these split fairly easy on the splitter, but some doesn't. Now there's lots of people that go out and spend like four or five thousand dollars on a wood splitter. I think I spent $300 on this one, like I said, about 15 years ago. I know a couple of people who bought the, the really expensive ones, gas-powered ones. Spent about $4,000 on them. <laughs> I know one guy who got to replace it this year. Everything gave up. The hydraulics, the motor, <laughs> everything wore out on them. But oh well, that's what happens sometimes. I haven't had to do anything with this thing. If you think homesteading's easy, 
and simple and you don't have to work hard you're going to be in for a real surprise once you uh, try and start homesteading it's never that easy uh, it's always really physical work a lot of physical work sometimes that's like sometimes I'll see these uh, maybe small videos or pictures on YouTube showing a, a beautiful house in a beautiful countryside you know way out in the bush and, and they say would you stay here for you know five thousand dollars for three months or ten thousand dollars for a year or something like that which is just you know it's just a social media thing and I, I listen to all the comments and say oh my god I'd go there for free I'd live there forever all by myself for free well most people don't realize just how much work that would be you live out in the countryside like that you don't have utilities you don't have any source of heat other than wood uh, wood don't just magically appear you have to go get it isolation being by yourself day in day out day in day out day in day out can get pretty monotonous now I'm a little bit different than most people because when I moved here that was my plan was to stay away from people as much as I could because when I ran my own business I was working from 7 in the morning till 11 o'clock at night people would still be calling me when I came here I gave up my cell phones I don't even carry a phone with me I haven't for like I said 15 years now no phones no nothing I've gone as long as uh, three months never left my property once not even once I still don't go out that much not very often usually now uh, when I leave the property uh, my wife and I were probably going kayaking I don't go grocery shopping I don't go to stores period retail just irritates me <laughs> so that's my wife's job I don't do that at all I don't go grocery shopping I don't go shopping for clothes that's my wife enjoys that that's something she's always enjoyed uh, I didn't even really do it when I lived and worked full time. My wife always did all that stuff. That was her thing, and it still is, and she enjoys it, and I'm more than happy to let her do it all. I don't want to do any of it. <laughs> so, yeah, but like I was saying, all of these social media things, you know, showing these cottages out in the middle of nowhere, and people saying, oh, yeah, I could live there forever with no internet, no hydro, yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> speaking from experience I mean most people don't understand where I come from we come from a fairly poor family my parents did what they could uh, when I was a kid I never had running water in my house no toilet we'd get up minus 20 outside you have to go outside to the hot house that was just the way it is uh, I, I remember getting up in the mornings when I was really young probably around seven or eight years old uh, get up in the morning and uh, we go to get a drink of water out of a bucket which was a clean bucket and clean water I mean that wasn't a problem but the water would be frozen on the top it would probably have like a quarter inch or a half inch of ice on top of it that's how cold it would get in the house at night so yeah that's pretty well I grew up that way I mean I, I I didn't have internet. There was no such thing as an internet or a computer when I grew up. My life was outside playing sports, fishing, hiking, camping. That's what I did. When I was 13 to 14, well, 13, and uh, if I wanted to be or go hang out with my friends at that age, I had to ride five kilometers, which is about two and a half miles, maybe a little bit more, on my bike every day. And I used to do that two to three times a day. And uh, as I got older, I had more friends that lived in a further community, which was 10 kilometers, which was about five miles. I would do that every single day for probably three years with no problem. That's five kilometers, or 10 kilometers one way, 10 kilometers back the other way. That's what I did. I, I mean, that was normal for me. I, I could go forever riding a bike. I still do quite a bit of bike riding, uh, not too, not as much as I used to, but I still do probably maybe 20 or 30 kilometers a week now, not a day. <laughs> so yeah, so if, if you want to go home steady, my biggest suggestion is to make sure you understand what you're getting into. Uh, everything you do on a homestead can be pretty physical even if you have all the money in the world and all the tractors and the equipment and all this stuff it's still a physical job 
a lot of physical work. So yeah, I always suggest, and I know people are going to hate me for this, but if you're overweight, lose your weight. Or you're going to hate yourself when you try homesteading. So yeah, homesteading keeps you healthy. You know, keeps you... Uh, uh, I was going to say it keeps you sane, but no, not really. Sometimes homesteading drives me absolutely crazy. But uh, like last night, uh, one of our rabbits got out, and I can't find it today. It disappeared. No idea where it is. So it's probably gone down in the bush somewhere. Yesterday, one of my piglets got out, and I didn't even know it. My wife came down, and she counted them. She says, Rod, one of the piglets is missing. I said, what? She says, yeah, count them. Seven pig we had seven piglets and uh, a boar and a sow, and there was one missing. Which I don't count them. When I go down there to feed them, they all gather around me so tight that you'd have a hard time counting them because they're in and out moving around. But uh, luckily enough, when I went back down in the afternoon, after I spent two hours looking for him, uh, he was back. I don't know how he got out. I still have no idea how he got out. Or maybe he wasn't missing, he was just lying down somewhere and I just didn't see him down in the, the back bush that I opened up for them. So, right now, I work harder than I've ever worked in my life and I make less money. <laughs> oh well, that's just like every other person that's retired. And if you decide to move out in the country and have all kinds of gardens, like I, I don't just have my uh, vegetable gardens and my greenhouses to take care of. I have all of my flowers and my flower beds and my rose bushes and you know there's many many things that I do here. I have my blackberries that I have picked blackberries just about almost every day now for the last week. Uh, I had to pick my strawberries. I have the dehydrate things. I have the bottle things. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you liked the video. Uh, maybe consider subscribing. Smash that like button and stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching.